How can preferences and defaults help when you're working with Chief Architect? All right, what is what is that? What are preferences? Preferences affect how the program works. Okay, there's some some preferences that we're going to set. The mouse. I want you to remember your mouse is your pick button. When you're using a mouse, okay, you've got some buttons on it. You probably got a wheel in the middle here. Maybe you have a cord. I don't know. But if you're right-handed, your right mouse button is your pick button. It's used to select things in Chief. You don't have to go up the toolbar to select something to grab it. You just right-click on it. And there's a setting I want to make aware of to you. Uh, we're going to set the handle fill colors, show wall types, select the room before wall in 3D. This is a big one that I don't know why they leave that preference turned on in Chief when you get it, but it's very annoying, at least to me. Again, a lot of these are personal preferences. We're going to set the handle size. Uh, again, I already talked about the extended tool configuration. Right click on a toolbar. And let's go do that because let me go let me just go show you some of those things. All you do in Chief is you're going to click on the P up here, little preference button. Uh, I think in older versions it was a couple of lines and 10. I don't remember what it was like anymore, but it's, it's the preferences. Look for the preferences. All right, so you click on that. It's going to open this dialog box, which just opened on the wrong screen for me. Here it is. Okay. And first thing I want you to do is check this in. Click twice to display. Don't uncheck them. Check this in because what that will do when you hit set it to click twice to display. All right. When you get Chief and you right click on something, every time you right click, you get a contextual menu. Very annoying to me. Again, maybe you like it the first time. Great. If you set it to click twice, what happens is when you click on something the first time, you don't get that menu. You just get that item selected and you have the appropriate edit toolbars for that item at the bottom of the screen. So set the right mouse button so that if you want to get the contextual menu just click twice with your right mouse button and there it is. Alright so especially when you're dimensioning your plan selecting things with your right mouse button works much better because you don't always have that menu in the way and you gotta hit select it's just kind of annoying alright so that's why I, I like to point that one out just s click twice to display again remember the right mouse button is your pick button it does other things in chief too but it's a pick button it's used to select things okay I also want you to s go to color right here click on color and we have four different color things we can hear in X1 I don't think you have this in version 10 I don't think you do either but I always set my handle fill color red I don't know it's just a color I like it's easy for people to see and I also like to select my set my fill color to uh, a pink you know I just select red and I make it pink and it shows up really well no matter you know what you're working on so I found those to be two really good settings you can you can set your transparency a little lighter if you want to all right so I want you to go to architectural right here and I want you to make sure you turn this button off. When you're in a 3D view and you're trying to click on a wall or click on a window or something like that, inevitably what you get is the entire floor. You get the entire room. And if you try to grab and move it, you might be raising and lowering your ceiling height. All right? And it's just like, it'll drive you nuts. So you don't want to be doing that. Turn that off. And then if, if this isn't turned on, which I think it is now, the show same wall types, that leaves a, that puts a handle on the end of your walls so you can grab that handle and just extend at an angle the walls. And I'm pretty sure that's turned on all the time. Now. All right, so turn that off. Let's edit handle size under edit. So again, this is up to you. You might experiment with this. It comes at four. Uh, I've noticed if I, I used to turn my handle size up to five and, and, and it might be better on your computer depending on the screen resolution that you're running under. But handle size, if you turn it up, it makes a little, the handles when you select things, makes them a little bigger and it's easier to grab things. So if you set the color and you set the handle size, it's easier to grab those things. All right. So those are just a couple things under preferences that I want you to consider changing. All right. And then let's get back to our PowerPoint. And under defaults, 
All right, so preferences affect how the program works. So when you make those changes in preferences, they're there all the time for all your plans. But when you get into defaults, this is a plan specific. It only affects the current plan that you have open if you're making the changes to defaults. So you add some new walls to a plan and then you open up another plan, you wonder where they are. Well, that's because defaults only affect the current plan that you're working on. <clears throat> some of the things that we want to talk about. Why do you want to set defaults? It saves you time. Change things once. So if you want a different door style, set your default door and run with it. Double click the icon to access default items. I'll show you that in just a second. What sorts of things should you change in your defaults? Window and door defaults. Cabinet defaults. Maybe your text. You want to use a different font in all your plans? Let's change the text default. Your dimensions. Your walls, adding different types of walls in your plan that you want to have available. All right, and when you make those changes, again, they're available for the one plan, but you can change them in your template so all the defaults that you change in your template would be available for all of your other plans. So let's just take a look at that. Your defaults. The defaults icon looks like a little wrench. Okay, you're going to wrench up your plan here a little bit. So let's click on that. And we go to that, and you're going to notice that you have a list of default settings. I always recommend to my clients, the first thing you want to do when you start a plan, especially if you're doing an as-built, you're, you're, you're measuring an existing house, run through this list of defaults and set it up the way the house is that you're going to be building. It matters. It makes a big difference. All right? So run through those things and do that. The other thing you can do to set defaults is just double click on the different icons. And notice once you do that, okay, so I double clicked on the wall icon here, and notice that I have an interior exterior wall defaults now. All right, so look for that word, defaults. If it says it in the menu and you're changing things in that menu, you're changing things that will affect the whole plan. The default settings. All right, cabinet defaults. So I double click on the cabinet icon. So everything that I change here for this cabinet will be will affect my plan. If I change the material, the colors, the door style, some things when you change them will change things that are already in your plan. Some things won't. It varies. Okay, there's differences that are involved here. So most of these icons you can double click on and get to the default menu. I just double click on the ruler icon, okay, and there's my dimension default. So whatever changes I make here will affect how my dimensions are put in the plan. So if I want to change my arrowheads, things like that, I can change that as a default setting. Same with text. Double click on the text and you can change the default text. What kind of font do you want to be using all the time? What layer do you want the font to be on from this point forward? All the different things that you change in that box will change the default. So the next time you, you use that tool and you click on your plan and you type something in, you'll have the new font. You'll have the new font. Now be careful in the text box. Don't type something in to the text default box because if you do that, the next time you open the text box, you'll have that text in there. I've done that plenty of times. I speak from experience. So you want to watch that. So you know, set your defaults because Setting those time, setting those defaults will save you a lot of time. Okay, your doors, you know, change it from that two panel I put into a six panel or whatever you use. Set your default first thing. That way, any door you put on the interior walls from that point forward will have the default settings. On.